He was playing the song with you. Da di da di da. Really, ba 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 di da. Hey, John, how you doing, man? <laughs> you hadn't made a, a formal decision to, to to be a musician yet because you, you went on to, to go and study law. Yes. So I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna study law and help my people out. So what? Why did you not want to? Go, be a musician yet? What was the, even though you had been doing it since you were 10, 14, 15, 16 years old, what made you maybe not make the decision then that you wanted to do this full time? Well, because I thought that uh, that it would be more ethic, ethical if I could give whatever help I could to keeping our people out of the hands of the law. I got you. You know. So you felt you would actually be doing better. Yes. And I also wanted to ask you about what, how are you, what was developing in you spiritually and mentally about your beliefs that you had been hearing as a child, uh, being the son of a minister, and also being also in a world as a young man in this very, as you know, I came from very religious people, they, they were cool mm. there carnal world, a very uh, mm. secular, yeah. well, what, 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 was, what was your own, were you believing everything that you were being taught in church or were you knowing that there was also, were you also feeling there was other things out there? Well, I knew that, that uh, the things that you learned from the King James Bible, mm. the way that that was written, if you paid attention to it, you made up laws that, that you knew if you lived by, uh -huh. it would keep you out of trouble. And how has that, your religious foundation, how has that helped you in your life? Totally. And, and how has that helped you in also dealing with things, mistakes you feel that you've made spiritually, and how have you dealt with that too? They've helped me a lot because to this day, if I get a problem, I look up the King James Bible until I find an example of, of that problem. Mm. And then I read, I read the story of how they fixed it, and then I fixed it. Because mm. I've, I've been with you many times before a show, and I've seen you, you and the family pray, and your wife say a prayer before. So I know that, <laughs> I know that, uh, the spirit of God is very close to, to, to you. Oh, know? yes. And that's always been interesting to watch. Another thing, so you've now made a decision to study law, to uplift your people, to, to have some sort of influence in the strife that your people are having. And where were you studying law? University of Toledo, uh, under the GI Bill. Is music still a part of your life at this time? What's oh, that, yes, I mean... Are you I made, still singing? Uh, I made a lot of money singing. Mm. So yeah. you were studying law and singing on the side? Yeah. Okay. When I, I used to uh, be liaison man for other entertainers coming through Ohio. I see. Like when Nat Cole was in, was in the state of Ohio, he would call me, and uh, I just did a gig in Columbus. I'll be up, up to to Toledo in two days, uh, so get me some of the smoke. I see, so you're the liaison man. Yeah, I was a liaison man for that. Go-to guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and then of course, there's that phenomenal meeting that really changed your whole life was when Charlie Parker came oh. to Ohio and he asked you to sit in. <laughs> And, and that, that has impacted the whole destiny of who John Hendricks is. Because, Absolutely. Because that, he, was, that was incredible. <laughs> he, he heard you sing and said, you meant to be a singer. Yeah. And you should come to New York. Yep. And I said, uh, New, New York, uh, a million people passing through every day, 11 million people. What am I going to do in New York? He says, well, that's where you got to come to to pursue the music business. So I waited until uh, 
there was an opportunity to leave mm -hmm. Ohio and not uh, inconvenience anyone. You know? So had you, had you already had your first child by then? Oh, yes. So you were a man in your 20s, an African-American man in your 20s with a wife and two children, and you meet one of the, 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 the great gods of this modern music mm. that we know, and he <laughs> tells you you should come to New York. Yeah. And you do it. Yes, I did. And I've, I've always thought about that. How many times have you told <laughs> that story, but, but just what that is. That, well, that, you know, you're a man, a young man in your 20s, you have a f family, and you, you're you going to do this. You're going to leave it all behind and come to New York and make something. I, I almost slipped out of it. I can imagine. That's a hard choice. I, I mean, I got to the club, and I said, no. The, the man I want to see is in there. Charlie Parker's in there. Uh -huh. But it's been two and a half years since I sang with him. So this is when you got to New York now. So you, yeah. you got to New York and you find it, trying to find Charlie Parker and you found where he's at. I, I found out where he's playing. And so. it's two years after he's told you. Yeah. So you're going, this guy's probably forgotten me. Yeah. You're going to walk in and expect him to remember you and everything? Uh -huh. That's pretty much so. And then you walk in. So I said, no, I don't think, so I turn away. Oh. But then I realized there's my wife. That's yeah, right. There's your family. And my family at the hotel. So you can't go back to that hotel with nothing. I ought to have some news. Something, because you just left Ohio. Yeah. So I gritted my teeth because I, I could see him wondering who this cat is, you know. <laughs> and let me tell you how sharp he was. As I went in, he was playing the song with you. Hey, John, how you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> it had been two years. And he remembered you straight. Straight out. And said it out loud to the people, too. 